In this lecture, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about implicit differentiation. In particular, we're going to be talking about implicit differentiation as it applies to inverse trig functions. We're going to make use of implicit differentiation in order to find the um, derivative rules for all of the inverse trig functions. So let's just start by recalling um, what the domain and range are of our six inverse trig functions. So we have sine inverse x, cosine inverse, tan inverse, cosecant inverse, secant inverse, and cotangent inverse. And we also know that we can sometimes express these as arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, etc. So remember that the domain of the um, inverse sine function is from negative 1 to 1 with a range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And if I'm looking at these um, as the restricted domains of our original functions, remember that, for example, if y is equal to sine inverse x, then that means that x is equal to sine of y when y is in this um, restricted domain. Okay, remember that if the domain of our inverse function is here and the range is here, then the domain of the original function is here and the range is here. Okay, so we're going to need to keep all of this um, information in mind. Okay. So let's just go on to the next slide and see how we can use implicit differentiation to find the derivative of the inverse sine function as our first example. So I want to find dy dx if y is equal to sine inverse x. Now I know that this um, equation here, y equals sine inverse of x, also means that x is equal to sine of y when y is um, the range of sine inverse, or in other words, the restricted domain of sine. So when y is between negative pi halves and positive pi halves. Okay, so that's just using this first row here. Okay, so now I can write x is equal to sine y, and I can use implicit differentiation, um, apply the derivative to both sides, and because I know the derivative of sine, um, I can make some progress on this problem. So if I take the derivative of x and then take the derivative of sine y, I'm going to get 1 is equal to, well, the derivative of sine y uses the, um, excuse me, chain rule. So we're going to have cosine of y times dy dx, and then I could solve this for dy dx. So I'm going to have dy dx equals 1 over cosine of y. Okay, so this is a good start, but what I'd like is a rule for the derivative of sine inverse of x, where what I have over here on the right-hand side is just in terms of x. So the question is, how can I rewrite 1 over cosine y so I have something that's just in terms of x? So this is where some trig identities are going to come in. So recall that we know that cosine squared y plus sine squared y is equal to 1. It's one of our Pythagorean um, trig identities. So I could solve this for cosine. So I could have cosine squared y equals 1 minus sine squared y. So that cosine y would be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. So in this next step, I'm going to make use of this information about where um, my angle y is. So if y is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, that I'm talking about things in these two quadrants, the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So we know that cosine is positive in each of those two quadrants, so I'm going to use cosine y is the positive square root of 1 minus sine squared y. So then I can substitute that in here. So initially that might seem like it's not that helpful, but remember we know that x is equal to sine y, so I can replace sine y here with x. So I get dy dx is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we've just shown that the derivative d dx of sine inverse of x, or of arc sine of x, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so using implicit differentiation, using that we knew what the derivative of sine was, we were able to find the derivative of arc sine. Okay, so we're going to go through and do um, another example where we find the derivative for another inverse trig function, and then we'll, we'll look at a table that has all of these um, definitions. So next, just for practice, we're going to find the derivative of y equals cotangent inverse of x. 
So notice that this is equivalent to saying x is equal to cotangent of y when y is between 0 and pi, because that's the restricted domain of the cotangent function. Okay, so now I need to introduce some derivative notation here. So I gotta have d dx of x equals d dx of cotangent y. Take the derivative of both sides. So I'm gonna have one is equal to, well now I need to use what I know about the derivative of the um, cotangent function. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So we get one is equal to negative cosecant squared y. And then I have to multiply that times dy dx because we're using the chain rule. So I'm thinking of y as being implicitly um, defined as a function of x. So now I solve this for dy dx, so I get dy dx equals negative one over cosecant squared y. Okay, so I need to use a similar technique to what I used before. Somehow I need to convert cosecant squared y through a couple of steps into something that just depends on x. So again, I'm gonna make use of identities. So let's go back and remember that sine squared y plus cosine squared y is equal to one. So if I wanted to um, get a cosecant squared y here instead of the sines and cosines, I could think about dividing each of these terms by sine squared. Because now that's going to put one over sine squared y on the right hand side, which is equivalent to cos um, cosecant squared. So I see that I get this new identity, one plus cotangent squared y equals cosecant squared y. Since cosine over sine is cotangent, cosine squared over sine squared is cotangent. So I get this um, nice identity here. So I can replace my cosecant squared with, with um, one plus cotangent squared. So I have negative one over one plus cotangent squared y. Notice that I know that x is equal to cotangent of y, so now I can replace cotangent of y with x. So I get negative one over one plus x squared. So we've now shown that the derivative of the inverse cotangent is equal to negative one over one plus x squared. So we can do this process for each of our six inverse trig functions. We convert the inverse trig function in, um, into its equivalent form with the original trig function. Then we use implicit differentiation to take our derivative, solve for dy dx, and then we make use of some trig identities as well as the, the definition here of x to convert our derivative to being in terms of x. So if we do that, we get all of our um, derivative rules for inverse trig functions. And I've um, organized these in this table so we can see what some of the patterns are. Again, notice that all of the co-functions are negative. Okay, and we have this relationship between inverse sine, inverse cosine, um, inverse tangent, inverse cotangent, and inverse secant, and inverse cosecant. So the derivative of um, inverse sine, or arc sine, is one over the square root of one minus x squared, where the derivative of inverse cosine is negative one over the square root of one minus x squared. The derivative of tangent, or arc tangent, is one over one plus x squared, and the derivative of cotangent, inverse cotangent, or arc cotangent, is negative one over one plus x squared. The derivative of our secant inverse, or arc secant, is one over the quantity x times the square root of x squared minus one, and the derivative of cosecant inverse, or arc cosecant, is negative one over x times the square root of x squared minus one. So you do need to memorize these six new rules and add them to your, um, all the different derivative rules that you know. So we just wanna look at two examples um, practicing using these rules. So in the first example, we're interested in finding the derivative of a function g that's defined to be the square root of one minus x squared times arc cosine of x. So now that's using that arc cosine notation instead of the cosine inverse of x. So here I've got a product of two things. So I need to look at doing the derivative of that first term. So that's one half one minus x squared to the negative one half times negative two x times arc cosine of x. And then I have to add this to that original first function times the derivative of arc cosine. And so we know the derivative of arc cosine is negative one over the square root of one minus x squared. So we're gonna get some simplification here. These cancel. So I'm gonna end up with, I'm gonna put that negative one first. I'm gonna have negative one 
plus, nope, excuse me, I'm going to have minus. So we're going to have negative 1 minus, see these 2's cancel, minus x arc cosine of x all over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so that's the form of our derivative of g. If we look at the second example, we've got y is equal to tan inverse of x squared. So that's the same thing as saying arc tan of x squared. So I'm going to have to use the chain rule first and do 2 times tan inverse of x, and then I'm going to have to multiply that times the derivative of tan inverse of x, which we know is 1 plus 1, excuse me, 1 over 1 plus x squared. So we see that our derivative is just 2, oops, 2 tan inverse of x all over 1 plus x squared. Okay, and we'll get a little bit more practice with these um, derivative rules for inverse functions and with implicit differentiation in general next time um, before we get into talking about section 3.6. Um, please let me know if you have any questions.